the Woods Watch Party rolls on to week four as we throw it back to Dartmouth's relentless run in 2015. The Big Green started the season with blowout wins over Georgetown and Sacred Heart, but it wasn't until this third game of the season on the road at Penn when Dartmouth and Dalen Williams proved that this offense was no fluke. Entering this contest without a win at Franklin Field since 1997 and without an Ivy League title since 1996, the Big Green made a statement to the conference. Things were about to change. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Woods Watch Party. It's week four. I'm Tyler Murray, ESPN Plus football broadcaster for the Dartmouth Big Green. And this week we're doing things a little bit differently. This game against Penn in 2015, it's a game, it's a performance that speaks for itself. So sit back, enjoy one of the best offensive performances ever put together by a Big Green team led by a fantastic quarterback performance. Energized crowd at Franklin Field. Gagenheimer approaches and with the right foot, an end over end kick floating down to Fiore at the six. From the right side of the field, cutting to his left towards the 20, and he stopped right there by a quartet of Dartmouth Big Green. We should say, Brian, that the, the fans listening on the radio may be confused by the crowd noise because the north side of Franklin Field is closed for seating, so all the Dartmouth fans are on the Penn side as well. And so you're going to hear cheers from the right side of the microphone and cheers from the left side of the microphone. Penn going left to right to start the game. Ball on the right hash, own 20-yard line. Alec Torgerson shotgun, Trey Solomon, the tailback to his left. A slot to the left, and Justin Watson split right. Handoff inside, Trey Solomon. He swerves between the hash marks and is stopped at the 27-yard line after gaining seven. Inside zone read. They didn't waste any time trying to see if they can penetrate that Dartmouth defensive line. Good success on first down. No huddle for the Quakers. Second and three, own 27. Ball between the hash marks. Torgerson from the gun. Solomon to his left. Movement along the lines. No flags thrown in. A slot to the left side of the line. Justin Watson split to the boundary. Penn averaging 22 and a half points per game this season. Dartmouth's defense has been excellent. Shotgun snap, handoff goes to Solomon over right guard. He is wrapped up immediately. Stuffing and plugging the hole is Eric Wickham, the senior linebacker, as he picks up his eighth tackle of the season. Tried to come back to the right side that time, but Dartmouth closed pretty quickly, so it was only a gain of about one. Penn faced with third and two here. Quakers on the season, 39.5% on third downs. Dartmouth second at the FCS level and points allowed on the season, just 17 total. Quakers going with a shotgun look. Trey Solomon is the tailback to the right of Torgerson. Slot to the left, empty on the right side of the line with two tight ends. Eight in the box for the big green. Hand off to Trey Solomon. That right side of the line is clogged again by Dartmouth. The ball is loose. Dartmouth indicating that it picked it up. Solomon's progress stopping at the 30-yard line. And it is big green football. So an early turnover forced by the big green. That's an area in which the defense has also excelled. Power play right up the middle that time, and Solomon gets met at the line of scrimmage, continues his forward progress very close to the first down distance, but as the pack kind of moved forward, the ball came loose, and unfortunately for the Quakers, Dartmouth recovered, and they'll take over here in great field position at the Penn 32. That's already the ninth turnover forced by Dartmouth, which is number one in the country in turnover margin. Dartmouth going right to left, First down, Penn 32, ball on the left hash. Dalen Williams shotgun to his right in the backfield. It is Ryder Stone. The pitch to him, he has a little bit of a hole, cracks his way through outside the hash marks and is stopped at the Penn 27-yard line after gaining five. Oh, you've got to give credit to both sides that time. Well-executed option to the wide side going right down the line. And Penn, once they saw it and read it, got secondary support that time to hold it to five yards. Second and five, Penn 27. Ball on the right hash, twins to both sides of the line. Dalen Williams, shotgun formation with Stone to his left. Williams takes the snap, steps up under pressure, dumps it off to Victor Williams on the cross. He goes to the right sideline and it's thrown out of bounds at the Penn 10, marked at the nine. That'll be a gain of 18 yards. Dalen Williams is just so calm and poised back there and so dangerous when he gets in trouble. That time he wasn't in trouble. He had good protection and just saw Victor Williams coming across underneath for an easy completion. Nice run after the catch. First and goal, 10-10. High shotgun snap brought in by Williams. 
Running across the formation for the Dartmouth Big Green, Ryder Stone, who's been the featured tailback on this series. Dartmouth has scored 80 points on the season, and Dalen Williams, the senior, has thrown for over 450 yards, two touchdowns, while rushing for 77 yards on the year. Second and goal from the eight ball, favoring the left hash. Dartmouth from right to left. Shotgun set, Stone the tailback to the right, twins to both sides of the line. Victor Williams, the outside receiver to the right. Williams takes the snap, looks left, checks the right, has plenty of time standing all day, throws in front of the goal line, and Victor Williams hauls it in, dives across for the touchdown. Pretty hard for the secondary to stay with it that long. Again, Dalen Williams had all afternoon back there to see what was going. He looked left, he looked right, he looked left again, and finally saw Victor break free just at the goal line, short of it. Made the catch on a nice completion and took it into the end zone. So Bar uh, Dartmouth jumps up early here. Second touchdown reception of the season from Victor Williams. Alex Gakenheimer on for the point after attempt. With 11.59 to go in the first quarter. Kicking to our left right now. No breeze. There's the snap. The spot and the kick is up. And it is good. 11.59 left in the first quarter. 7-0 Dartmouth cashing in Hench on that 10 turnover. The fumble on third down by Trey Solomon. And as you said, Brian, that's been their MO all season. They've, uh, they're plus eight in the turnover category. And on a day like today, in a game like today, in any game, really, you just can't lose that turnover advantage. So the Quakers are gonna have to regroup here. A disappointing beginning to this contest. Before that series, Hench, looking back at how the first two games have gone for the Dartmouth Big Green, how about this nugget? courtesy of Director of Athletic Communications from Dartmouth, Rick Bender. The Dartmouth defense has outscored the opposition in terms of points allowed 18 to 17. Now that wasn't the defense scoring directly there, but certainly the offense capitalizing on it. And that just speaks to the strength of this Dartmouth D. I mean, you give up 17 points through two games, that's not bad, but then you score on your own 18. Whoa. Yeah, that's a nice formula. <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Wind intermittent and swirling around. The Quakers trying to answer, trailing 7-0 against a Dartmouth team that is looking for its third straight win to start the season. Both Dartmouth and Penn among the last of the Ivy League teams to get going in conference play. Penn's offense now with an opportunity to try and settle itself down and play composed but the Quakers uh, they only had two turnovers in the first two games yeah I, I couldn't see Brian there really was a pile of bodies you know vying for real estate there you, you see it so much on TV bodies are just pushing one another it's not that Solomon was necessarily moving the pile but somewhere in there somebody got either a hand and grabbed the football or a helmet pushed it out or uh, you, you couldn't see, but anyway, it ended up on the ground in Dartmouth possession. Patty Clancy holds the ball on the tee. Gakenheimer from the 35, a short kick countryman from the 12. Running it back from left to right. Ducks through some traffic and then is flattened at the Penn 25-yard line, which is where the Quakers will take over with 11.54 to go in the first quarter behind 7-0. Penn fans, the next time you're visiting Franklin Field or anywhere else on campus, be sure to stop by Abner's Cheesesteaks of University City, located on the corner of 38th and Chestnut Streets. Abner's Cheesesteaks, some of the best cheesesteaks in Philadelphia. Quakers, left to right, ball spotted, left hash on 25. Alec Torgerson shotgun, Trey Solomon trying to shake off that cough up to his left, trips to the right. And the tight end, Ryan O'Malley, is split to the boundary. That's the left side of the line. Alec Torgerson. Takes the shotgun snap, throws it in the right flat, reeled in by Justin Watson. Escapes one tackle, takes it to the sideline, and he muscles his way up towards the 30, but he's marked out of bounds at the 29 to pick up a four. Well, that's just another way they're trying to get the ball into Justin Watson's hands. The trips look at there on the right side. They throw the ball to him. He's got two blockers in front of him. He's got to shake one to make it a big gain. Unable to do it that time, but he still picked up four. Second and seven, Penn, own 28, ball on the right hash. Trips left, Cam Countryman split to the right to the boundary. Alec Torgerson shotgun, and two is right in the backfield. Tight end, Ryan O'Malley. Torgerson looks right, double clutches, throws to the right sideline. No one there up by the 50-yard line as Vernon Harris was all over Cam Countryman. He was 
looking for countrymen on a, a turnout pattern there. And I don't know whether they got their signals crossed, whether Alex thought he was going to continue the route and go to the, the post or not, or the flag, excuse me. But anyway, that ball just sailed on him. Quakers 0 for 1, third down so far this afternoon. Third and 7 on 28, ball on the right hash. Torgerson shotgun, Trey Solomon the tailback to his left. Danny Ferentz in the slot to the left, and Twins pile to the boundary to the right. Torgerson takes the snap, retreats to his own 20, slings it over the middle, jump ball, knocked down in coverage for the Dartmouth Big Green. That's middle linebacker Zach Slavsky, who stripped it away from Justin Watson incomplete, and the Quakers will be forced to punt. A pretty tight window to get that ball in there. Slavsky was in great coverage, running right with Justin Watson across the middle of the field on a short in pattern. Looked like, uh, as you said, it was a jump ball. Both of them had a chance to get their hands on it, but it threw one in the air, and of course it's incomplete. So Penn's gonna pump one here. Hunter Kelly on the season, just 35 yards per punt. Back to return for the Big Green, Danny McManus. Another McManus for the Big Green. Kelly, a wobbler from his own 20, bounces at the Big Green 42. It rolls in Penn's favor, and it'll be downed at the Big Green 37-yard line, courtesy of Brendan McGinty, a freshman for the Quakers, with 10.58 to go in the first quarter, and Dartmouth leads 7-zip. Well, we talked about the wind at the top of the show, Brian, whether it was going to be a factor or not, and it's a win for both teams, but at the moment, Dartmouth has the wind at its back, Penn has it in its face, and it certainly affected that kick by Hunter Kelly. Dartmouth starting from its own 37, right to left, ball on the left hash. Dale and Williams shotgun, twins to the right. Victor Williams split to the boundary to the left. Kyle Bramble is in the game, play fake. Williams flush to his left under pressure, and he just gently throws it away over the sideline. Well, the Quakers came after him that time. Kevin Joma was in the blitz. Good pressure also on the end. Tyler Drake. And a late penalty call. Didn't even see the flag down there is David Carlton says intentional grounding against he's Dalen Williams. On that uh, rollout, he's got to get the ball back past the line of scrimmage, and I don't think he did. Yeah, went out of bounds. But wait a minute. You know, they, haven't, the they haven't called anything here. There's, there, there is mass confusion on the field. Because there's no loss of down indicator. So and the ball's still spotted at the 37. All right, so by all accounts, it's second and 10. Dartmouth 37. Shotgun snap to Williams. Hand off to Kyle Bramble. His first touch of the season goes right up the gut between the hashes, and he's brought down to the 41-yard line, a gain of four. Good close by Jack Madden, the wide side defensive ender linebacker that time. Saw the play develop quickly, got in there, put a shoulder into McManus. First third down of the day for the Big Green. They have converted at 39.5% this season. Third and six on 41. Ball between the hashes. Shotgun Williams trips left. Victor Williams to the right. Williams slings it to the left sideline. Williams hauls it in as he circles out of bounds in Penn territory at the 49-yard line. He's, of course, their leading receiver. A tough guy to control as we saw in that touchdown throw that time again a turnout pattern at about seven yards Kevin Ajoma in pretty good position but still unable to prevent the completion Williams 178 receiving yards and a touchdown last weekend filling in for Ryan McManus first down from the pen 49 on the sweep the handoff going to Brian Grove stretching it to the right sideline and he's shoved back behind the midfield strike to the Big Green 49, that'll be a loss of two yards. Oh, great defensive hustle that time by Cooper Gardner, is one of the down linemen in there at sec in that second group. He showed incredible speed for somebody who's a 6'1", 270-pound freshman. Should mention that Lou Vecchio, one of the down linemen for Penn, is out today. It'll be second and 13, Dartmouth, ball in the right hash, own 48. Williams shotgun, trips the left, Williams split to the right. The tailback is Bramble, he gets the call, slices through a hole on the right side and bounces it towards the numerals on the field. Brought down to the pen, 42-yard line. In on the tackle for the Quakers, Austin Taps. Just tough luck in coverage that time. Tyler Drake, who's the short side defensive end of linebacker, on the snap of the ball, he circled from his position all the way back into the middle of the field as if he were going to have a middle blitz that time. That's right where the ball went. So there was a, a perfect opening for yardage for Dartmouth. Third and 
three. Hand 42, shotgun snap. Williams thrown into the left flat. Victor Williams darts through one tackle, slices into the middle of the field, and he's finally gang tackled at the Quaker 21-yard line as Tyler Drake was there to stop him. But Victor Williams, very shifty, thrown into the flat, and then he cut it to his right towards the inside part of the field. Wow, you got to think there was holding in the, for Dartmouth that time. Mason Williams just got tackled out there, and he's the lone defender on the island. Once they tackled him, it was easy pickings. In the pen, 21, ball in the left hash, Dartmouth right to left. Allen Williams, shotgun empty, trips to the right. Victor Williams split to the left. Williams takes the snap, stands strong, looks to his right. Now he's going to scramble to his left. Escapes Austin Taps, and he's tackled by Kevin Joma and Tyler Drake at the pen, 15-yard line, gaining six. Always a threat on the ground is Dalen Williams. You know, you think he's so nifty and quick you, that he doesn't have any size to him, but he goes 215 pounds and moves pretty agilely out there. He is second all-time on Dartmouth's list for uh, total yards within sight of about 500 yards of Jay Fiedler. It'll be second and four Dartmouth, pen 15, ball on the left hash, trips to the right. Williams shotgun takes the snap, gets more good protection, steps up, and he darts and dances to his right, spins out of a tackle from Jack Madden, and plunges ahead for a first down along the right hash mark to pen eight. Boy, we saw that so many times the past couple of years. First of all, is still has way too much time. That Dartmouth offensive line doing a good job of holding the defense out. And once nobody was open that time, he dodged two tackles and just picked up the first down. Very dangerous. 7.20 left in the first quarter, 7-0 Dartmouth. Goal to go from the pen nine, ball on the right hash. Williams shotgun, a slot to the left. Victor Williams split to the boundary to the right. The tailback is Brian Grove. Quakers going with four defensive backs. Bring seven men up the line. Williams on the option play. Keeps it to the right side of the line. Powers his way to the goal line, and he crosses it for Dartmouth's second score of the first quarter. Well, you called it, Brian. Penn came with everybody but the kitchen sink on the blitz that time. The pressure on the defense coming up the middle. Dartmouth either luckily or by plan, ran an option to the outside. Williams, for a moment, had a thought of pitching the ball, saw enough daylight, and literally just powered his way into the end zone. Dalen Williams, his third rushing touchdown of the season. Alex Gagenheimer, who has only missed four point after attempts in his career, will be kicking to our left with no breeze right now. That one is blocked, and it's brought down by Jack Madden. He laterals it ahead to Mason Williams, who's lassoed from behind of the pen, 35. So an opportunity for two points goes awry, but the Quakers shaved one off for Dartmouth, and it remains a 13 to nothing big green lead. 6.58 to go in the first quarter. You'll listen to Quaker football from Learfield Sports. Alex Gakenheimer kicking off from the right half of the field. Ball between the hashes on the T 35-yard line. Fiore and Countryman back there for the Quakers. Countryman will get a second crack from the five. Taking to the left sideline, stutter stepping, bouncing it to the outside, has room to the 35 40, where a wall of Dartmouth Big Green special teamers force him out of bounds. Countryman getting it all the way up to the 42. Really nice return for Cam. Yeah, it looked like it was really congested going up that left hash. And I'm thinking to myself, why are they trying to run into that mob of people? And just then, Countryman sort of makes a move to his left and dodges all that traffic, gets to the sideline, takes it all the way out to the 42-yard line. So at least the Quakers have good field position to start their third drive here. For the first time today, 6.50 to go in the first quarter, 13-0 Big Green. Quakers from left to right, ball on the left hash. On 42-yard line, twins piled to the left side of the line. Adam Strauss split wide to the left. In the shotgun formation, Torgerson hands off to Trey Solomon, who is smothered, gobbled up, and spit out by Flo Orimolade, the junior from Burtonsville, Maryland. And he's playing that right defensive end. He's the guy they're reading on that read option. He closed real hard. Alec probably should have pulled the ball that time because he would have had a pretty, pretty easy go of it as he would if he had run to the left. Ball between the hashes at the 42 on second down, 10 to go. Quakers go with a slot to the right and also twins piled to the left. Christian Pearson, who has a touchdown catch on the season in the slot to the right. Torgerson shotgun, Solomon to his left. Handoff inside to Solomon. Good persistence by Penn, and some space opened up as Solomon went through the left side of the line up to the 47. That's the same play they ran on first down, although that time the Dartmouth defense was in a different look. 
Solomon does a pretty good job of picking up five yards. Quakers need to sustain a drive to say the least. They are 0 for 2 on third downs, third and five, ball between seven. Torgerson shotgun, Solomon the tailback to his left, a slot to the right, and again, twins to the left, stacked up top. Torgerson takes the snap, a handoff to Solomon, and Solomon aggressively burrows up the gut, and he reaches the Dartmouth 49-yard line. A yard on a first down. Now they run the same play again, and that's the same play Solomon fumbled on in that first offensive set. That time he held on to the football, but Penn faced with fourth and two, and they're going to go for it. Torgerson under center. Solomon, the lone setback behind him, trips the right side of the line. It's fourth and two, Dartmouth 49, Penn 0 for 4 on fourth down tries. Now they send two men in motion, Pearson and Strauss, the left side of the line. Torgerson backs into a shotgun with Solomon the tailback to his left. Now we've seen the quick kick this season. Here it is for a second time. Torgerson gets it off, drops inside the 20. Justin Watson giving chase along with Adam Strauss and Christian Pearson down to the big green 10 yard line. Another great call by the Penn coaches. Again, they were messing around with formations. It looked almost like they were trying to do a hard count and get Dartmouth to jump off sides. And Alex Torgerson lined up under center then dropped back into the shotgun took his good old time back there in patience as, as though we were waiting for the snap to call an offensive play and put a sidewinder kick on it down to the eight, nine yard line. Had they tried to punt that ball, they would not have gotten that with a, a, an advantage. 4.45 to play in the first quarter. It's 13-0 Big Green. They've scored on each of their first two offensive series. They start from the 10, going right to left, ball between the hashes. Trips to the left. Dalen Williams shotgun hands off to Vito Penza. Penza listed as both a quarterback and a running back, and Penza out of Youngstown, Ohio, gets another carry. Buddy Tevens, the head coach for Dartmouth, compared him to Tim Tebow. He said he's Tim Tebow-ish, but throws better. Uh, he's also a freshman and uh, <laughs> has, has actually figured into two of Dartmouth's victories. Second and four, Big Green, owns 16. Ball between the hashes. Twin stack to both sides of the line. Williams shotgun, Penza stands in there to his left. Williams takes the snap, he's gonna throw. Unless he's forced to scramble. Dances to his right, chucks it over the middle. Penza leaps up to make the catch. And Penza has a first down along the left hash mark at the 22 yard line. Boy, you don't need a stopwatch to clock how much time Darren Williams has back there. You need a, an hourglass. Morrison, Clark, Flores, Mamula, and Davis. The five men up front for the Big Green, and they are veteran and outstanding. First and 10, Dartmouth. Ball on the left hash, on 22. Trips right, empty on the left. Shotgun Williams. Hands off inside. That is Kyle Bramble. Ran into traffic, bounced it towards his left, and the Quakers string him out to the sideline. He'll end up losing about three yards back to the 19. We saw a lot of Kyle Bramble last year. He was a tough guy to bring down. Wind picking up, but no rain during the game so far. Lights on at Franklin Field. You can see the various commemorative flags from each class here at Penn swirling above. Some of the Ivy champion teams. It'll be second and 13, Big Green, back at their own 19. Williams shotgun, twin stack to both sides of the line. Bramble remains in a tailback to the left. Williams takes the snap, looks right, checks left. Statuesque in the backfield. He's going to scramble to his left. Tyler Drake can't get him. Williams takes it up the left sideline, out of bounds at the Big Green 34. I mean, he is not even moving his feet back there. You're right. Statuesque was a great call, Brian. And, you know, once he does start moving his feet, he makes people miss. That time, Tyler Drake, who's probably one of the best defenders on the Penn team, was unable to tackle him in space. 2.33 to go in the first quarter. Fresh set of downs, Dartmouth. On 34, Williams takes the shotgun snap. Play fake, throws it out into the right flat. Uncovered for the Dartmouth Big Green and racing up the sideline. It's John Mark Carrier. Carrier, a yard short of a first down, the son of the former NFL player, who is now a league executive. You know, when the quarterback has that much time back there to see what's happening, it leads to a lot of frustration, a lot of... 
annoyance in the secondary. I'm not sure what the right word is, you know, and you, you almost start to lose your concentration. The, the guys trying to play pass defense here really have their hands tied. Second and one from the gun. Williams, design keep, right side of the line, rips through it, crosses midfield, and zigzags down to the pen, 47-yard line. That's a gain of 10 and plenty to have the big green move the sticks. You know, what I was beginning to say is you, you almost start to begin to question your defense and say, do we have the right scheme? Are we doing something wrong? And that's when you get an opportunity for people to freelance, and that's not the answer either. First and 10, Dartmouth, pen 46, ball favoring the right hash. Williams shotgun, twins right, and Victor Williams not in the game right now. One receiver split left. Flags thrown, Dalen Williams over the middle, was able to find between the hash marks Brian Grove. Grove has it to the Quaker 39, but again, there are markers on the field. The flag came out pretty quickly. David Carlton will give us the call. So I, I'm not sure it would have been a hold, but. Been a penalty on both sides so far this afternoon. That one against Dartmouth, a five yard illegal formation penalty. Now, David Carlton, this might be his first game officiated here as a lead referee at Penn, but there is literally no one on the north side of the field, and that's the side of the field that he went to face <laughs> to indicate the signal. I mean, there is, the coaches are in the north side press box. Stage that's it. Right. So that'll make it first and 15 for the Big Green back at their own 49 yard line. Ball favoring the right hash. Williams shotgun, Grove the tailback to his right. Twins to both sides of the line. Seven in the box for the Quakers. Dallin Williams drops, throws to the left. Hauling it in, it's Cameron Scaff, the backup tight end by the left sideline. And he's thrown out of bounds by Tyler Drake, who's been all over the field for Penn at the 42. For Scaff, that's his second catch of the season. Tyler Drake held on to him. Ian Dobbins finished him off. Excuse me, Dylan Muscat. 13-0 Dartmouth, 37 seconds to go in the first quarter. Dallin Williams, shotgun, second and six Dartmouth, pen 42, ball in the left hash. Twins both sides of the line. Pens in the backfield. Williams takes the snap, faces some pressure, throws to his right. There's a flag on the play. Reeling in the re reception was John Mark Carrier at the pen 35, tackled by Mason Williams. They gave him forward progress to the 35, but looks like it's going to come back holding against Dartmouth and that one will be coming back to so the big green their second penalty on this series Dartmouth with the second most penalties against itself in the Ivy League this season Quakers been rotating in a lot of defensive linemen early on in the first quarter trying to find the right combination that can bring some pressure they finally got a little bit on that last snap they're trying everything I can tell you that Brian Second and 16, Dartmouth, ball in the last half, own 48-yard line. Dalen Williams, shotgun, Kyle Bramble, the tailback to his left. Trips to the right, Victor Williams splits the boundary to the left. Inside handoff, goes to Ryder Stone. Stone stuffed at the 50 after gaining two. I beg your pardon, it was Stone in the backfield and not Kyle Bramble. All right, one quarter in the books and so far on the road at Penn. Dartmouth is making a statement. 13-0 Big Green. We'll see if they can keep it going when we come back. Make your debit card green. Big Green. Select from 16 options by visiting any Ledyard Bank location or calling 888-746-4562. Ledyard's online and mobile banking includes free personal mobile check deposit, so you can show all your Dartmouth pride on your home turf. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Pierre LeBlanc, president of Engelberth Construction. For over 40 years, we've been recognized as one of the largest and most dynamic commercial construction companies in northern New England. As a premier builder and partner of Dartmouth Athletics, we have built many facilities on campus. And at Engelberth Construction, we truly believe in building relationships for life. Go Big Green. Back to the action here in the Woods Watch Party Week 4. The Big Green in control early on. Williams shotgun. Twins to the right and also to the left. 
Quakers put seven in the box. Williams takes the snap, drops to his own 40. Under pressure, steps up, throws to the left. Victor Williams in space. Left sideline, he darts for a first down. Out of bounds at the Quaker 32. Given a lot of space out there in the flat hedge. Well, they came with a blitz again that time. And under some pressure, but showing great poise again. Dylan Williams just dumps it off out in that left flat. And Victor Williams takes it down the sideline for the first down. The Quaker 32, first down, ball in the left hash. Williams shotgun, trips to the right, Williams to the left. Hand off inside to Ryder Stone, who literally tripped on the field turf. And he's still able to get two yards, getting to the 30-yard line. Yeah, I think the Quakers were lucky there that he did trip because they had a pretty good running lane. Dartmouth has used a trio of running backs today between Stone, Brian Grove, and Kyle Bramble. Getting a few tackles. Bramble is looking to get to 1,000 yards, become the 27th player in Dartmouth history to do that. That'll be second and nine, big green, 10-31, left hash. Trips to the boundary, play fake, screen set up for Williams. Williams cuts to his right and is able to carve out some good yardage towards the first down marker, maybe a yard short, but a late penalty flag is thrown in. Well, you got to worry about this one. Seemed like maybe that could have been... A reaction to a uh, loss of composure. Quakers won penalty in the first quarter. Gives us a moment, hence, to look at some of the numbers in this game. Dalen Williams, 8 for 9, 98 yards throwing, 5 carries, 47 yards on the ground. So quick math, it's about 150 of the nearly 200 yards that Dartmouth has churned out. Dead ball personal foul against the Quakers. So that's going to be half the distance of the goal, which is unfortunate for Penn, playing on its heels already, down 13-0. And Dartmouth has not seemed phased one bit hence in this game. They could not look more comfortable. No, they, they certainly do. They're in rhythm. And it, again, it all starts with that quarterback, Dalen Williams, who just seems to really make it work. we got a Dartmouth player who just... Ball is on the left hash. First and 10 from the Quaker 12. Slot to the right. Victor Williams split to the boundary. Ryder Stone, the tailback to the left of Dallin Williams, who takes the shotgun snap, and he's going to run to the left side. Gaping hole, stutter stepping, trying to bounce it outside, and the Quakers finally wrap him up. He'll gain about four down to the Quaker seven. That had potential. It was a quarterback draw all the way. Dallin Williams going off to the left side, dancing around one Penn defender but the, the rest of the defense converged on him and held him to a five-yard gain. Second and six from the Quaker seven. Shotgun snap, handoff goes to Kyle Bramble, left side of the line. He takes it along the left hash mark to the Quaker four. In on the tackle for Penn, Luke Nossum. Of note, Hench, as you spotted, Colton Moskow, the leading tackler for Penn, in his civvies and jersey on the sideline, so he is inactive today, a late scratch. Yeah, it looks like uh, you know, Brandon Mills has been in there since the beginning of the game. Dartmouth is three for three, third downs. It'll be third and three from the pen four, left half. Shotgun formation, Bramble the tailback, gets the carry, going to his right, cut back left, and he's dragged down before reaching the goal line. Stepping in for the Quakers, Brandon Mills, the sophomore out of California. That's the kind of the only kind of tackle that was going to stop him from getting into the end zone. He kind of wrapped around him around mid waist and kind of spun him backwards because it looked like he was going to be able to force his way to another Dart Dartmouth touchdown. Dartmouth is three for nine on fourth down tries this season. They've got it at the pen two, fourth and one. Dallin Williams shotgun, Bramble the tailback to his left, the slot to the right. Williams split to the boundary. The Quakers bring everyone up along the line of scrimmage. Motion into the backfield. Handoff goes to Bramble. To his left, Kyle Bramble stopped short of the goal line, but it appears he has reached the one. No signal for a touchdown. Bramble kind of just burrowed into the offensive line. A couple of the linemen looped around behind him and gave him that push from behind. Unable to cross the goal line, but the football lies at about the half-yard line, maybe even a little tighter than that. Dartmouth, first and goal inside the one. Ball on the left, hash already leading 13-0. Dalen Williams, shotgun. 
Kyle Bramble the tailback. Now Williams goes under center. The Quakers try to protect against it. Williams to the left side, and he's through for the touchdown. Boy, you got to wonder there, Brian. You know, they, that goes under center. The Quakers adjusted about as well as you could. The linebacker squeezed in tight, got right up in there to stop that quarterback sneak, and somehow Williams found a just enough breathing room to stick his nose in the football into the end zone. And so Dartmouth adding to its lead here, digging a very deep hole for the Penn Quakers. Alex Gagenheimer kicking to our right. Out of the hold of Ben Kepling, his high school teammate. There's the snap. The hold is down. And the kick is up, and it's good. The Dartmouth Big Green increases its lead to 20 to zip. 11.53 to go in the first half. And Hench, you just gave a very understandable and appropriate wow when you look at what they did on that drive. It was more of a groan than a wow. <laughs> uh, 16 plays taking the ball from their own 90-yard line right down the field. Took them seven minutes and 52 seconds. And if you were ever going to be a little dispirited, the Quaker defense has to think, what's going on here? And the offense, having only nine offensive plays, certainly has has not gotten its rhythm yet here today. And they better pick it up in a hurry, Brian. Sometimes stats don't always reflect the score. But so far this afternoon, without question, they do. Dartmouth leads 20 to nothing. They have 189 total offensive yards to Penn's 24 and they've possessed the football for nearly 11 and a half minutes. The Quakers just over four minutes, 40 seconds. One turnover committed by Penn. And for the Quakers' hedge, it seemed like they entered this game with the strategy of trying to replicate what they did against the high-scoring Villanova team. Control the clock, keep the opposition off the field. But at this stage, you're down 20 nothing. It's You're going to have to try to move the football. It's deja vu in reverse, if there is such a thing. Dalen Williams has been masterful. He was a runner-up for the Bushnell Cup for Ivy League Offensive Player of the Year last year against the Quakers a season ago. Didn't have to do a lot in the passing game, but he ran for three touchdowns, has thrown for one, and rushed for two more today. As the win really picks up at Franklin Field, it is blowing in the face of Alex Gakenheimer, kicking off from the left side of the field. Back to return for Penn, Cam Countryman and Eric Fiore. Countryman with a really nice run back earlier. Gakenheimer gets it off with the wind not blowing, but now the wind gusts pick it up. Comes down short to Fiore at the 12. Against the right sideline, Fiore trips across the 15, and he's stopped by Charlie Miller at the 27-yard line. So, yes, Hench, we might need to see an adjustment, or we'll see how deliberate the Quakers are going to be when it comes to their game plan entering today, with Dartmouth leading 20 to zip. You know, when you don't get first downs, Brian, it's really hard to say it's a game plan. You, you don't get into a rhythm. You don't have a chance to have one play build on another play. And so far, that's been the fate of the Quakers here this afternoon. Quakers starting from their own 27, right to left. Ball on the right hash. Alec Torgerson shotgun. Trips to the left. Justin Watson split to the right. And now the pass goes to Watson. Watson in the left flat. Lost his footing. And he'll end up losing about four yards. Watson was actually positioned, I beg your pardon, in the backfield, flanking Torgerson. Yeah, that time they tried to get three blockers out in front of him. As you said, it was tripped to the left. And Justin Watson's lined up in the backfield. They just, you know, dumped the ball out to him. But Dartmouth responded really well and forced a three-yard loss. Second and 13, Penn on 24-yard line. Twins tight to the left side of the line towards the boundary. Trips to the right. Two tight ends are in the slot. Torgerson from the gun. Ball in the left hash. Takes the snap. Under pressure. And now he's going to run it along the left hash mark. And Alec Torgerson across the 30, up to the 32-yard line where he is stopped. Big Green are able to prevent anything dangerous from happening there, courtesy of David Caldwell. It'll be third and five Quakers. They're 0 for on third down today. 0-32. Torgerson shotgun empty. Trips to the right and a slot to the left. And 0-2 on third downs. Dartmouth goes with three down line, but really fills the gaps with three outstanding linebackers. Torgerson takes the snap, retreats to his own 25. Quick throw over the middle, deflected, hanging up there, and flutters for Penn's sake, fortunately, the artificial surface off the hands of Ryan Kelly as Torgerson tried to find a really tight window amidst double coverage. 
what's what's tighter than a tight window? There's got to be a description for that because he was double covered on both sides and a third defender behind his back. It was going to, it, it had no chance, I guess is basically what I'm saying. Very tough start for the Penn Quakers as Hunter Kelly comes on to attempt the punt, dealing with the wind. Kelly has had two punts with a long of 39 today. Danny McManus standing between the hash marks at his own 25, getting ready to return. Hunter Kelly standing back at his own 17-yard line. McManus filling in for his older brother Ryan. A low snap picked up by Kelly. Got the right leg behind it. Danny McManus runs up to the 30, stumbles as he brings it in. His progress stopping at the 32. 10-13 to go in the first half. Quakers behind the big green, 20 to nothing. Penn fans, low-fat chocolate milk contains the right mix of carbs and protein scientifically shown to help refuel muscle. When you need to outperform the competition, grab some chocolate milk. It helps restore muscles quickly to their peak potential and replenish what your body's lost after you work out. Refill your body with chocolate milk. Go to dairyspot.com for more information. Domination from Dartmouth. Starting from its own 32, left to right, ball favoring the left hash. Dalen Williams, shotgun formation, twins to his right. Victor Williams, split to the left. Williams takes the snap behind the 25, zings it to the left sideline on the comeback route. It's Victor Williams. And Williams is a first down up to the big green 43. Timing play out on that left side, Victor Williams and Dalen Williams. You get the feeling that they uh, live with one another in the summer and have <laughs> practiced that play about a thousand times. Again, he goes down about 12, makes the break to the outside. The ball's in the air. Easy completion for Dartmouth. New set of downs for Dartmouth on 43. Ball in the left hash. Twins to both sides of the line. Shotgun snap to Williams. Pressure from the edges. Williams looks to the right flat, now scrambles that way. Williams is going to race the sideline and gallop out of bounds after being pursued by Jack Madden. No gain. Good hustle by Lucas Nossum also playing in there as one of the down linemen. Quakers had had a tough time throwing Dartmouth off schedule on first downs, but now second and ten upcoming, this time from the right hash. Certainly have to give Buddy Tevens credit and what he's been able to do with Dartmouth, certainly not just this season, but in the last five years. Second and ten big green on 43. Williams shotgun trips left. One receiver to the right, inside handoff. Brian Grove gashes right up the middle across midfield, and he surges across the pen 40, down to the 37-yard line. A nice run by Brian Grove. Great space created by the five-man big green front. Probably doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, I, this offensive line has been very impressive for Dartmouth. That time again, they, they created a crease right quickly at the line of scrims, and Grove took full advantage of it going straight ahead. The pen 37, ball between the hashes. Twins left, hand off to Grove again, going to his left. And he's lassoed as he reached the 34-yard line in on the stop. Tyler Drake once again. Unfortunate for the Quakers to see the game unfold this way in the first half, given all the momentum that was generated after the Villanova victory. But an early turnover set up Dartmouth, and the Big Green have not looked back. Second and seven, ball towards the left hash. Pen 33, Williams shotgun. Trips right, Victor Williams split left. Grove the tailback to the right of Dalen Williams. Quakers go with a seven-man front. Williams takes the snap, looks left, throws that way. Victor Williams with another catch, tackled by Ian Dobbins. But that is enough for a first down of the Quaker 26. Well, we described that exact play about three plays ago. There they go again, and it's... Victor Williams turning out at about 12 on that left side and no wasted effort to get the ball to him from Dalen Williams. The Quaker 26, ball in the left hash. Williams shotgun. Ryder Stone tailback to his right. Stone gets the carry, cuts to his left. Brandon Mills hanging on and Mills brings down Stone outside the numerals at the 23. Finished off by Ian Dobbins. And the Quakers... I think are, are feeling the frustration of, of having somebody like Dale and Williams just kind of call the shots and literally having everything work for Dartmouth offensively. Second and six, big green, pen 22 going from left to right, ball in the left hash. Williams takes the shotgun snap, 
Pressure from both sides, floats it to the back left corner of the end zone, over the shoulder, the ball is caught, and it is a touchdown for the Dartmouth Big Green, Houston Brown. Perfectly placed, and a nice haul in by Brown. And here's the, the ultimate frustration again, Brian. Uh, Kevin Ajoma is in really good position in this coverage. Has the inside, he has a look at the football, tries to go up, and his, his reach is just five inches too short, and a great reception by Brown. But wow, talk about frustration. First touchdown reception in the career of Houston Brown. Here's the kick going to our right, and the point after is up, and it's through. The Big Green are blowing out the Quakers, 27-0. 7.01 to go in the first half. From the left side of the field, Alex Gakenheimer, ball in the teeth. Between the hashes, 35, a side-winding kick down to Fiore from the pen, 12. Going to his left, cuts between the hash marks, racing towards the sideline. And he's bulldozed out of bounds. Leading with the shoulder, Will Constant for the Dartmouth Big Green. But some good acceleration flashed by Eric Fiore. You know, the one thing that strikes me about this Dartmouth football team is they're playing like they know they're good. There is a level of confidence that just exudes from what they're doing. They they have confidence in their system. They have confidence in their players. And, you know, they, they've got a very talented group of athletes on this football team. Quakers going max protect with an inverted wishbone look on first down, own 26. Ball in the left hash, pen from right to left. Keeping the handoff for the Quakers. Alec Torgerson, the quarterback, going over the left side of the line, Oof. and he gets maybe two. He got popped that time. He, uh, he better check his uh, ear holes. Out of that inverted wishbone, which they're in again, they fake the run to the left side. Torgerson takes it up the middle. And he paid for that effort. Second and eight, Penn, own 28, ball in the left hash. Cam Countryman split wide to the right, and it is Watson to the boundary. Torgerson fakes the handoff to Jay Cammon, Jr., and Torgerson will take it again to the left side of the line, and he carves out only two yards before he's flattened at the 30-yard line. Well, they're on the same play again out of that same formation. They fake the running play left. Torgerson uh, pre, uh, executes the belly uh, ride and then takes it up himself. But that time, again, he maybe picked up one or two yards. It's third and about six. Quakers 0 for 3 on third downs. Their own 30. Ball on the left hash. Torgerson in a true shotgun set. Brian Shainauer, the tailback to his left. Trips to the right side of the line, empty on the left. Eric Fury and Justin Watson both in the slot. Torgerson, pressure from the edges, stands strong on the crossing route. The tight end, Ryan O'Malley, is able to make his way up to the pen. 37, make it 38, and that'll move the chains for the first time today. Well, the offensive line held its ground that time, and a long crossing pattern, as you said, by O'Malley. And he did a good job. The ball a little bit on his back shoulder, but he managed to make the catch and uh, guts, guts down a couple more yards to get the first down. Torgerson now three for six. First and 10, Penn on 38. Danny Ferentz lined up to receive the Wildcat snap. Flanked on both sides. Fakes the handoff to Shane Hour. Now he flicks it into the right flat to Eric Fury, who stutter steps and speeds up that right sideline. Starting to see some creativity for the Quakers up to the 49, and that'll be another pin first down. A little bit of mix-up again. Danny Burns, as you said, played the tailback position. They call it a wildcat. He makes the ride as if it's going to be the option. Rolls to the right, and Eric Fiore snuck out of the backfield into that right flat. He dumps the football to him. Payne gets another first down. From its own 49, ball in the right hash. Inverted wishbone set. Cam Countryman split to the left. Justin Watson is to the right. Torgerson takes the snap. Fakes the handoff to Shainauer. Torgerson, a great push to the right side of the line around tackle and drops down to the Dartmouth 46. The Quakers have crossed midfield for the first time in this first half. Read option and a good read that time by Alec Torgerson. He keeps the, the ball himself, turns up the right side. Penn now faced with second and five. 420 to go in the first half. Penn down 27 nothing. Ball in the big green, 46 and a half. Inverted wishbone. Hand off to Jay Cammon Jr. Bouncing it towards the right side of the line. Ball is loose. And fortunately for Penn, the sideline was not too far away. Will Constant almost came up with it. Uh, it looked like the rookie uh, Cammon could not hold on to that after he got hit for no gain. But the Quakers lucky that the ball did bounce out of bounds. 
So a third down situation here. You know, the Quakers have a long way to go, down 27 nothing, but you, you've got to get first downs. Third and eight, Big Green 49. Pistol set, Shane now with a tailback. Trips left, Justin Watson split to the boundary. Alec Torgerson now walks up to the line before retreating. Now a shotgun look. Dartmouth with a seven-man front. Torgerson off his back foot, dumps it off for Shanauer in space. Brian Shanauer collides viciously with Will McNamara. The former All-Ivy lineman just stood his ground and knocked back Shanauer. Penn two yards short. Shanauer stops the 43. Quakers going for it quickly. Torgerson under center on fourth and two. Penn on the day is one for one on fourth down tries. Ball on the right hash, Big Green 43. Torgerson stays under center. Shane Hour, the lone setback. Slot left, Watson split right. Dartmouth going with only three defensive backs here. Now a shotgun look with Shane Hour to the left of Torgerson. Option play. Torgerson to the left side. He slithers to the 40 yard line. He's stopped there by Slavsky, but the Quakers do convert. Not a whole lot, but that's just what you needed. They run the option to the left side. They actually played the pitch man pretty well. And Alec wisely just said, I'm going to try to get this first down on my own, which he did, falling forward to put the ball on the just shy of the 40-yard line. Misting drizzle at Franklin Field. 2-4 to go in the first half. Penn has it at the Dartmouth 40. Ball towards the left hash. Quakers going from right to left. Trips to the right. Shorgerson. Torgerson shotgun with Shane Hour to his left. Shane Hour gets the carry along left guard. Shane Hour surges to the 36. You know, I'm watching Alec Torgerson. He is still kind of checking his neck out from that first hit he took when he ran the quarterback draw. I mean, he's flying fine. He looks fine, but uh, you can tell he took a whack that time. Second and six pen. Dharma 36. Ball favoring the left hash. Trips to the right. Watson split left. Torgerson shotgun. And Shane Hour will stay in there to his right. Torgerson just four for seven. Dalen Williams 12 for 13 for 148 yards. Part of four touchdowns that Dartmouth has scored here in the first half. Play clock at five. Torgerson takes the snap, looks left, floats it down the sideline. Nowhere close to Justin Watson. But a flag is thrown in as Vernon Harris was tied up with Justin Watson. Down around the 20-yard line. Justin was trying to run on that left side, a version of the out and up, made a little move, and Vernon Harris got tangled with him right there. More than that, he hit him, and that's when the flag came out. That's why the ball was kind of fluttering out there in no man's land, because Justin Watson couldn't get there. So big break for the Quakers. Still a long way to go, but it's good to see him get a little bit of momentum here, a little bit of confidence back in the offense. Penn approaching the red zone. A minute 43 to go in the first half. First and 10, Dartmouth 23, ball in the left half. Wings to both sides of the line. They're piled to the left. Ryan Kelly in front of receiver Justin Watson. Alec Torgerson shotgun. Sets it up in the flat, throws it complete to Justin Watson on the screen, and Watson throws down to the big green 17-yard line, a gain of six. Yeah, that's the kind of play that Justin Watson broke for a touchdown against Lehigh. Again, he's got Ryan Kelly out in front of him, and the Twins, he made a block, and Justin uh, still picked up five. There's a snap, second and five, thrown over the middle. Ryan Kelly in between the hash marks. Makes the first down reception to the big green 11. Good short sure reception. Kelly's the inside receiver of the trips look, and Alec Torgerson just sits back there to see who gets in the open zone. It happens to be Kelly, and they get the first down. Penn picking up the pace, at least on that play. First and 10, Dartmouth 11, shotgun empty. Hand off on the sweep. Coming to the left, it's Brian Shanauer, and Shanauer is able to reach the Dartmouth four-yard line. Well, they put Shanauer out, flanked on the right side. He comes in motion, and the jet sweep takes the handoff and almost gets down the field. We thought we saw a flag. It looks like a piece of trash. Second and three from the four. Shotgun snap, Torgerson. Left flat, Watson. Watson towards the pylon, reached out, and he stopped a yard short. 41 seconds to go in the second quarter. The Quakers do have all three timeouts. But they tried to get to the sideline. Now, that was enough for a first down. So it's goal to go, inches away from the goal line, left hash. Penn from right to left. Torgerson shotgun. Trips right. Shane out with a tailback to his right in the backfield. Watson split left. 
Fake the handoff to Shane Howard. Torgerson to the right side. Alec Torgerson is in for Penn's first touchdown. The read option again where he sends the fake it to Shane Hour, and he follows him right up into the hole. It was not much of a hole. It didn't need to be. Quakers only needed about a foot to get into the end zone. So the Quakers get on the board here right at the end of the first half. And long way to go, but you got to feel good that they put an offensive drive together and got a little bit of momentum going here. Quakers going with a junk look on this extra point opportunity as there are six players outside the hashes to the left. And now everyone huddles up close along the short snapper, McVeigh. Jimmy Gamble on for the point after attempt. And the officiating crew is going to blow the whistle. And a timeout taken by Penn. Penn was going to lose the 40-second clock. And... We're going to get a, a, assessed a five-yard penalty. The timeouts at this point with 36 seconds left in the half probably are not very valuable. So they took the timeout to avoid that situation. That last drive ending with a one-yard run by Alex Torgerson. 14 plays, 74 yards, six minutes and 17 seconds. And you'll wonder what took them so long because that they had that kind of performance earlier in the game this score wouldn't be as one-sided as it is O'Leary now to handle the snap for the Quakers Christian Stapleton coming off a broken right finger to place it down Gamble kicking to our left to dry try and bring Penn back within 20 a little breeze to the back of Gamble there's the snap the hold is down a line drive kick is wide to the left it'll remain 27 to 6 with 36 seconds to go in the first half, Jimmy Gamble, just his second career point after attempt that he misfired on. All things considered though, Hench, the Quakers trying to cut into this big green, sizable advantage, get a little bit of momentum there. Dartmouth's gonna have the ball to begin the third quarter, but if you're searching for something, suppose that was it right there. Well, I, I would absolutely agree. And if you're searching for something, you'd rather come up with six than nothing. And keep in mind that Dartmouth had an extra point blocked earlier in the game. So in one sense, the two teams are on schedule. Penn fans, a reminder that the Quakers are back at Franklin Field to complete this two-game homestand next Saturday at 1 o'clock versus nationally ranked Fordham. Tickets are available now at pennathletics.com backslash tickets, or you can visit the ticket office in person adjacent to Waitman Hall on 33rd Street, right in front of Locust Walk. Rain picking up and swirling around at Franklin Field, where the temperatures are just above 50 degrees. The Quakers down by three touchdowns, 27 to six, 36 seconds to go in the first half. Aaron Morgan will handle the kickoff. He has one touchback this season. Back to return for the big green. Danny McManus and Troy Donahue. Quakers will kick off from the right side of the field on 35. Here is Morgan, end over end kick, heading towards McManus. Danny McManus from his own two, to the right sideline. McManus breaks a tackle, pushes ahead across the 25, and the youngest of the three McManuses to have played at Dartmouth is tackled at the 27 yard line with 29 seconds to go in the quarter, each team with two timeouts. Quakers defense looking for something positive. Dallin Williams has just been like Yannick Nazé Cezanne, the conductor of the Philadelphia <laughs> Orchestra today here, Hans. He is just on fire. 12 of 13, 148 yards, two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. Dartmouth its own 27 to start this series, going from left to right, ball in the right hash. Inside handoff, going to Ryder Stone. Stone crosses the 30, follows his right guard block, and he reaches the 31 to pick up a four. Game clock moving to 15 seconds. Does not seem like either team is inclined to use a timeout. Coming up at the half, we'll hear from Don Pansiello and Dan Poulos, a linebacker and offensive lineman, respectively, for the Quakers. And Dartmouth will just let time expire here in the first half. It really was all big green. Well, Penn gets on the board at the very end of the half there, but a 27-0 start for Dartmouth. It'll be 27-6 heading into the locker room. Stay tuned. 
Hi, I'm Chelsea from WISE. I'm at home practicing social distancing just like all of you. For almost 50 years, WISE has supported survivors in times of stress and crisis. Even during these unusual and uncertain times, we are still here for you and your loved ones. On those inevitably hard days or moments when you're not feeling particularly strong, we are here for you every hour, every day. While it feels like everything in our world has come to a halt, violence doesn't stop just because there's a virus. Call 866-348-9473 and to chat with us online, visit our website, wiseuv.org. Call 866-348-9473. You are not alone and you don't have to be in a crisis to call. Domino's is serious about food safety. That's why your pizza stays untouched after baking at 450 degrees. And now that every delivery is contactless, you can safely mix and match any two or more for just $5.99 each when you sit around the table, even if it's not the same table. Ready to start the second half. It looks like the Big Green have this one in hand, but it'll take a few more scores to put this one away. Let's see what happens. Aaron Morgan will kick off from the left side of the field, ball favoring the far hash from the 35. Troy Donahue and Danny McManus back for a turn. Short end over end kick to Danny McManus from his own nine against the right sideline. Tears his way through. Only Adam Strauss really in front of him. And Strauss stood his ground and brought down Danny McManus, who bolted up that right sideline to the 43. You know, they had talked uh, during the week about kicking the ball away from the McManus boys uh, because they're such dangerous return threats. That time, again, he took the ball. It was a short kick on that right hash. Straight up the hash, saw the daylight to the right side, took it there. And, you know, Dartmouth starts at its own 43-yard line. Pretty good field position. Going right to left, ball on the right hash. Dalen Williams, 12 for 13 in the first half, takes the shotgun snap, and a pitch to Ryder Stone. Blasts across midfield, and Ryder Stone stays between the hash marks until he's brought down at the Penn 35-yard line. And on the tackle for the Penn Quakers, that was Justin Morrison, a freshman. Another one of the Penn guys getting up slow. I can't get a number. Brandon Mills, slow getting up. He's uh, coming off under his own power. This is a good sign. That was a play that started out looking like the option, Brian, and they turned it into a shuffle pass. He was trying to get Penn to react wide, which they did, and it opened up the grove right up the inside shoot. Dartmouth from the pen 35, favoring the left hash. Williams shotgun, motion to the backfield. Ryan Grove, fake the handoff to him. A flag is thrown in. Williams under pressure, dancing around until Austin taps. Finally, brings him down. And finally, the Quakers are able to get Williams in the backfield. Well, that's a good sign. And again, uh, those three people in that pen rush had him boxed in. Looked like a couple arms got to him unsuccessfully. But then Austin taps really took advantage and closed it down and... That yellow flag that we thought might be an advantage for the Quakers turns out to be a deficit here as they walk it off against Penn. It was offsides on the defense, so unfortunately, wow. that negates the play by Austin Taps. Taps had a solid performance last year against Dartmouth with a half a tackle for loss. It'll be first and five for the Big Green, the Penn 30 yard line. Ball between the hashes. Williams shotgun, Bramble the tailback to his right. Twin stack to both sides of the line. Williams takes the snap, shuffles back to the pen 40, hit as he throws a low throw that's incomplete to Houston Brown, who brought in a Dartmouth touchdown reception in the second quarter. And brought Tyler Drake from his right defensive end position, got him into the pass rush. Did a good job of getting to Williams just as he threw that football. That's why it hit the dirt before it got to the receiver. So two good defensive plays in a row here by Penn, one negated by the penalty, but they're showing a, a little bit more life here at the beginning of the second half. Second and five, Dartmouth, Quaker 30, shotgun snap to Williams, twins to either side of the line. Williams steps up, guns it downfield, hauling it into the goal line for the score. It is that man again, Houston Brown, with his second touchdown of the afternoon. He split Justin Morrison. I think it was uh, Ian Dobbins. 
That was a gutsy throw uh, and a tough catch. Just split the defense that time. Justin Morrison in there for one of his first defensive sets and just a perfectly thrown ball right between those two defenders. Alex Gagenheimer kicking to our left. Breeze at his back, low snap, and placed down by Ben Kepley, and the kick is up, and it's good. It takes Dartmouth 66 seconds to score in the second half, 34 to six, as the Big Green increases its lead. As convincing as the score is right now, a fact that we should keep on remembering and not let it escape our minds is that Dalen Williams is a darn good football player. I mean, that's really what we're seeing here. Certainly, could there be things that could be going better for the Penn Quakers? Absolutely, but Dalen Williams is flat out outstanding. And if you think back, Hench, to some of the quarterbacks in the Ivy League in recent history, Ryan Matthews, we were discussing with our production crew up here in the booth during the half. Uh, obviously, the former quarterback of Cornell. But he was not quite the dual threat that Dalen Williams presents. Because even if Williams has a tough day in terms of throwing, I mean, he just, the dynamic he presents on the ground is such a key. Uh, Matthews was a, a pure thrower. And Dylan Williams does it all. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries a quick kick somewhere along the way. So Dalen Williams now increases his passing touchdown total on the day to three, five total touchdowns. Rain really picking up. Alex Gakenheimer kicking off from the right half of the field. Back to return, Eric Fiore and Cam Countryman kick going to the right side of the field. Fiore brings it in from the 12, going to his left. Now cuts to his right, trying to get outside. But he's walled off by the big green and reaches only the 26-yard line. But updating the numbers on Dalen Williams and his performance today, he has hit 200 yards passing right on the nose. His rushing yard total, total has not changed. But how about Houston Brown really rising to the occasion in the passing game? Quakers going with Andrew Lisa at quarterback. Lisa, this is his first varsity snap. And left to right on 26 trips to the boundary. Thrown to the right flat, Cam Countryman. And Countryman is tackled after making the catch and gaining three yards up the sideline. Well, you got to figure Penn's looking for a change of pace. Uh, Alex Torgerson did a good job taking him down the field right at the end of the half. So uh, I, I just think they've got to figure a new face might make a difference. Second and seven, Penn. Ball thrown 29, right hash. Trips to the boundary. Dustin Watson split to the left. Lisa throws into the right flat, brought in by Countryman again. Gets a couple blocks, one from the tight end, Ryan O'Malley, and enough space to be able to take the ball up to the 33. Same play, two safe throws for Lisa as he gets into the ball game here. Just a hitch pattern out to the right side behind two blockers, but Penn still faced with third and four here. Let's see what uh, Andrew can do here. Breakers one for six on third downs. Third and three on 33, ball on the right hash. Shotgun empty set with trips to the left and a slot also to the right. Lisa out of Morristown High School in New Jersey, just over the Ben Franklin or Walt Ritten Bridge. Takes the snap, drops Lisa. Fires complete to Danny Ferentz. Ferentz between the hash marks up to the 36 yard line. That should be just enough for Penn to move the chains. Now the official on the far side is saying first down. The linesman on this side was saying no first down. So I, I go with the guy across the field. Lisa had a very accomplished high school career. He's in the shotgun, ball between the hashes, Penn on 36. Shane Hour with a tailback to his right. Twin stack to the right side of the line. Danny Ferentz now in the slot to the left. Lisa takes the snap, takes the handoff to Shane Hour, and now rumbles up the gut. Had some nice running room, and he reaches the 43-yard line. That'll be a gain of seven. Just the read option, again, uh, Andrew made the right read, made the fake to Shane Hour, kept the ball himself, turned it up off the tackle area for a gain of about seven. It'll be second and three, Penn, on 43, ball between the hashes. Lisa shotgun, Shane Hour with a tailback to his right. Twins stack to the right side of the line, Ferentz again in the slot to the left. Dartmouth going with four defensive backs, three down linemen, as they have done for most of the day. 
And off Shane Allen, cutting to his left, stays on his feet as he lost his balance, and that allows him to cross the blue midfield stripe and get to the big green 49-yard line. Another well-executed read option that time. Shane Allen getting the keep. And he ran the ball very well against uh, Villanova last week when he was in there for Trey Solomon. The 61 yards, second highest single game total of his career. Shotgun snap, hand off to Shane Hour from Lisa, and Shane Hour stopped immediately after gaining a yard between the markers to the 48. Boy, they're going to a very basic offense here. There's a couple of hitch passes in a row. Now they're running the, re the read option three, three downs in a row. Lisa was a sophomore in the 2012 Ivy League championship team, playing behind Billy Ragone and also Andrew Holland. It'll be second and nine Quakers, Dartmouth 48. Ball between the hashes, Quakers from left to right. Twins left, Justin Watson split to the right. Inside handoff to Shane Hour. Left side of the line, and Shane Hour follows the Dan Poulos block down to the 46 yard line, a gain of two. It looks like that had a chance to be a little bit bigger game. Brian Shane Hour got in there again. He, he runs low to the ground, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure how effectively the linebackers get a read on him. But it still gives them about third and seven here. The Dartmouth 46, Quakers two for seven on third down. Lisa shotgun, Shane Hour standing to his right. Trips to the right, Justin Watson to the boundary to the left. Option play. Oh and now they hand it off to Christian Pearson, who is trying the end around. And he is snuffed out as Dartmouth read that play. Flo Arimilade along with Will McNamara, the backbones of that Dartmouth defense coming up with a big stop. You talk about smelling a play out or having dumb luck. That time again, they run the, the pitch reverse that time. And oh my, was he ever nailed right there. Christian Pearson didn't have a chance. Quakers one for one on fourth downs. They're gonna try it. Fourth and 11 from midfield. Lisa shotgun, Shane Howard to his right, twins left. Snap to Lisa's. Lisa is bulldozed, dropped, sacked, and he lost the football. Wow, from the blind side, didn't even see it coming. That is Flo Orimilade again. Such brute force bringing down Andrew Lisa and the Big Green, it appears, have indeed recovered. Well, they gave a greeting that time to Andrew Lisa. Orimilade did coming from the left side. Andrew never saw him. And he got wrapped around, around the shoulder pads and the neck. And blasted into the turf so it was a fourth down so of course the sack is almost irrelevant in terms of him moving the football further aj zuda with the recovery at the 10 43 dartmouth back out in the field leading 34 to 6 9 20 to go in the third dartmouth right to left trips right victor williams split left Dalen williams takes the shotgun snap he slings it low Incomplete to Victor Williams down at the pen 35 for Dalen Williams. That marking just his third incomplete pass of the afternoon. Yeah, for a change again, Lucas Nossum that time actually got Dalen Williams a little bit out of his rhythm. I don't think so. That ball hit the turf, and it, it may be, Brian, as you commented a couple times, the rain is much more in evidence here. And to make matters worse, it's the worst of raining on pens, they are going to be penalized here. Or something. We haven't gotten a signal yet. I do not have a cell phone. Well, a personal foul roughing the passer, so that will allow Dartmouth to walk it all the way to the Quaker 27. Williams shotgun, Bramble, the tailback to his left. Trips the boundary, that also to the left. Williams takes the snap to the pen 27, hands off to Kyle Bramble, who went over a thousand query rushing yards earlier in the game. He follows the right guard block down to the 25 yard line, gaining two. As far as Dartmouth's rushing attack today, it's been by committee between Brian Grove, Ryder Stone, and Kyle Bramble. Second and eight upcoming for the big green. Ball at the pen, 25, favoring the right hash. Williams shotgun, Bramble to his left. Slot left, Victor Williams split to the right. Quakers going with a seven-man front. Williams with a right-handed pass into the left flat, caught by Bramble. Stutter stepping, patiently waits for space. And he's able to chew out some yards to the 22-yard line before he runs into a wall of Quakers after gaining three. And the wind is picking up here in the booth, too, Coach. Yep, the uh, rain. Yeesh. We got word from our crack crew that was doubtful for the rest of the game. Seems like an injury situation with that. Third and five for the big green. Quaker 
22. Garvin picking the three for fourth third downs. Handoff Kyle Bramble easily waltzes up the middle of the line and takes the first down carry to the Quaker 14-yard line before he's stopped by Eric Swanson. I think the hurricane might have got here early. Yes. We are getting wind gusts up here in the booth that are does not seem to be like the forecast is accurate. No rain, really. First and 10 for Dartmouth, pen 14. Option pitch out of the gun. Dalen Williams finds Kyle Bramble. Bramble gets three yards to the 11. That's the same play that had big yards before. That little shovel pass. And when Williams starts to act like he's going to the boundary, you got to respect that. And then he dumps the ball off on that little inside pass. It is a pass. It's an underhand pass, but that's what they call it. Second and seven, Dartmouth, pen 11. Ball towards the left hash. Williams shotgun, fakes the handoff to Bramble, and he is pile driven back by Dan Connerman to the 14 yard line, a loss of three. Well, that just shows that uh, Dylan Williams is human. That time he made the wrong read on the read option, and Dan Connerman was right there to tackle him. Dartmouth, four for five, third downs. They have third and 10 from the Quaker. 14, Williams shotgun, Bramble to his right. Trips to the right, Victor Williams split left. Quakers with four defensive backs. Bramble looks to the right flat, and now Williams, he watched him get swallowed up by the pen pressure as the Quakers rely on Luke Nossum, who's had some nice plays in the early going this season, who comes up with the sack. That is just the second sack of the day for the Penn Quakers. Dartmouth is going to bring on Alex Gakenheimer to attempt a field goal of 37 yards from the left hash, kicking to the uprights to our left with the breeze to the back of Gakenheimer. There's the snap. The hold is down. The kick is up, and the kick is wide to the left. No good. It remains a 34-6 Dartmouth Big Green lead with 6.07 to go in the third quarter. As Hench said, we got some information that Alec Torgerson is doubtful to return in this game. And the word we've heard, Hench, probably hasn't been all that right in terms of his health for the last week and a half or so. Really gutted it out during the Villanova win. He looked very good. But he took a couple tough hits in that first half against the very physical Dartmouth D. Yeah, it's that one we talked about where he got it got wrapped right around the neck. Penn takes over its own 20-yard line, going from left to right, ball towards the right hash, twin stack to the right, slot to the left. Andrew Lisa takes the snap, throws into the right flat to Trey Solomon. Solomon lowers the shoulder, he runs into Eric Wickham against the right sideline after reaching the 23-yard line. Well, he was confronted by two defenders there, and the Trey tried to split the, the defense, didn't work. Still picked up three yards on that little swing pass. Whistles blow from the officiating crew, as this will be an official's timeout. Well, if anything, Hench, this is an opportunity to see Andrew Lisa and what he might be able to do off of this Penn team in a backup role. So these are very valuable reps for him. Again, he had not taken a varsity snap before this afternoon. Well, he certainly paid his dues. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually good to see him get a little work out there, as you said, Mike. Son of David Lisa, who played for Penn. Second and seven, Penn on 23. Shotgun snap to Lisa, throws into the right flat. It's caught by Justin Watson. Watson back towards the middle of the field, and he's tackled at the 29-yard line. And Watson O'Malley tandem again. They they want to get the ball in Justin Watson's hands and hope that O'Malley can create some damage there, but they haven't had great success. Justin Watson takes himself out of the game. Third and one, Quakers, zone 29, ball in the right hash. They're two for eight on third downs. Lisa shotgun, Solomon the tailback to his left. Slide to the left, and Christian Stapleton, as you mentioned, Hench, checking in to the boundary to the right. Lisa takes the snap, hands off to Trey Solomon, who is stuffed by Will McNamara, who missed last Saturday's game versus Sacred Hearts, but he has been back with a vengeance today. Well, all you can say when that is, wow. <laughs> he is a force out there. He took Trey Solomon about a yard into the backfield and buried him into the end. Will McNamara was the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Week the first week of the season. Had a game-best 11 tackles against Penn last year. Hunter Kelly 
from his own 20. He boots it away, a little bit of a wobbler. Danny McManus calls for the fair catch. Takes a Quaker roll, and it'll be downed at the Big Green 24-yard line by Matt Henderson, special teams player who logged some good minutes against Villanova. 4.15 to go in the third quarter, 34-6. Dartmouth leading the Quakers. It's soggy, dreary, and rainy. Franklin Field hands home opener at the start of a two-game homestand that is not going to get any easier next Saturday against number 13, Fordham. Penn entered 1-1, one one. Dartmouth 2-0. Trying to beat the Penn Quakers for a second straight season. Jalen Williams remains at quarterback. Dartmouth from its own 24. Ball in the left hash going from right to left. Trips to the right, out of the gun. Williams hands off to Brian Grove. Grove is wrestled down from behind by Corey Power at the 27-yard line. Power had a very nice game against Dartmouth last season with 11 tackles. He was pretty quiet in the first half. In fact, he wasn't on the field a whole lot. I wondered whether he was banged up, but he's been active here in the second half. Second and seven, Dartmouth own 27-yard line. Williams shotgun, twins to both sides of the line. Brian Grove, the tailback to the right. On an option play, a pitch to the left from Williams to Grove, and Grove is driven out of bounds along the left sideline as Don Passiello led the charge. That'll be a loss of a yard. Make it two. Your halftime guest, Dan. Pansiello did a great job of reading that play, going laterally to his right side and meeting that pitch man right at the sideline. That, that's just really excellent defense by Pansiello. Dartmouth four for six, third downs, third and nine upcoming from its own 25. Ball on the left hash. Dalen Williams shotgun, Grove to his left, trips right. Houston Brown with two touchdown catches to the boundary. Williams gets protection, looks to the left flat, throws that way. It's caught along the sideline by Grove. And a flag is thrown in as Grove is forced out of bounds by Justin Morrison, the freshman getting playing time at the 33. I think they're going to get Houston Brown, the other wide receiver out there for holding. Each team with three penalties on the day. And it will be a holding call, as you said, Hench, against Dartmouth, according to Carlton, the lead referee. Certainly the differential in points. 34 to 26, very impressive for Dartmouth, but also the fact, you know, coming on the road, making a long trip, not very easy for the Big Green, playing in these conditions, not ideal, but they have looked crisp and sharp and every bit as much like a team that could have a shot at the Ivy League title this year. Now, the key game for the Big Green, obviously, at least as it stands right now, a good old Friday night matchup at Harvard the day before Halloween. Third and 11, Big Green 23 ball on the left hash. Williams shotgun, Grove to his left. Trips right, Victor Williams split to the boundary to the left side of the field. Williams takes the shotgun snap, and now his space opens up on the left side. He's going to run. Cut back to his right, and Dalen Williams brought down to the 35-yard line by Sam Phillippe. And depending on the spot, that could be enough. And it is. Got the 11 yards he needed. Dalen Williams, a special player. And you, you, sometimes you just got to shake your head and say, how did he manage to do that? You know, that? That's the kind of ball player he is. Two minutes, 22 seconds to go in the third quarter. First and 10, Dartmouth on 35. Shotgun formation, snap to Williams, throws it to the left side, bringing it in is Victor Williams. Williams, eight yards outside the hash marks up to the 43 of the big one. Justin Marshall, the freshman, is seeing some activity in that boundary corner. He made the tackle that time. Williams shotgun, second and two, own 43. Grove to his left, twins to the right. Victor Williams, the receiver, split left. Hand off to Grove. Across the formation from left to right, lowers the shoulder along the right hash mark, and he reaches the 45-yard line. Should be enough for a first down on the tackle for the Quakers. It's Phillippe, the rookie, who had a pick hench against Villanova, and he's a guy to watch. Yeah, I mean, you got an awful lot of rookies. There's three, three freshmen in that secondary right now. Yeah. Brandon Mills out there along with Don Pansiello. First and 10, Big Green on the move from right to left along the right hash mark on 45. William Shotgun Grove to his left. Twins left. Houston Brown split to the right. Handoff goes inside to Grove, working along right tackle. Some nice space carved out by Zach Davis and the rest of that line. Davis shaking off an injury earlier. 
And into Penn territory goes Grove and Dartmouth for the Quaker 48. Yeah, we're talking about freshmen, Brian. I should have mentioned that Cooper Gardner is in there at the nose tackle, too. So that's four freshmen on the field for that Penn defense right now. Parents went to Dartmouth, both of them. Uh, <laughs> and he wised up, I guess. 65 seconds left in the third quarter on second and four from the Penn 48. The handoff goes to Ryder Stone. And Stone is a first down along the right hash mark. Tackle made by the Quakers a group effort led by Tyler Drake. And Dartmouth now just seems like content to rely on the ground game. Yeah, this is one of these end time drives where they just kind of grind it out, take time off the clock, and frustrate you even more defensively. First and 10, 10, 43. Williams play fake from the gun. Plenty of time. Airs it out down the middle field. He's looking for Williams. Wide open. Peter and a touchdown. A 43-yard strike. Dalen Williams to Victor Williams. And Dartmouth has reached 40. Well, he had about four or five steps on the secondary that time. It was uh, Mason Williams, I think, and Sam Phillippe who just couldn't stay with him. Williams, the receiver, Victor Williams, not Jay Williams. Victor Williams, his second touchdown grab of the season, six touchdowns on the day for Dalen Williams. Four through the air, two on the ground. Gakenheimer to our left, nails the point after, and with 37 seconds to go in the third quarter, it's Dartmouth 41 and the Quakers 6. You're listening to Penn Football from Learfield Sports. And against the Quakers, he has nine over the last two meetings. Gakenheimer kicking away from the right side of the field, a short kick, and it comes down to Countryman at the 15. Countryman left side, slashes through some space, and then he runs into traffic to 30 where he's brought down. 32 seconds left, Hench, in the third quarter in a game that has gotten farther and farther away from Penn, so what do you do? What do you look for? I got a question for you. How do you interpret what's happening out there this afternoon in light of what happened last Thursday night when they play the number five team in the country and physically managed to stay with them and win the football game and today seem to be so outclassed physically. To be continued with that answer. Yeah. Penn starting from its own 30 from right left to right, ball on the left hash. Hand off to Trey Solomon. Solomon over left guard. Three yards to the 33. Well, it's Williams to Williams again, this time for 43 yards and a touchdown to cap off another terrific quarter for Dartmouth. So we head to the fourth right after this. Growing your business isn't just one thing. It's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cap is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. For a limited time at Milton Cat, get 0% for 60 months on select new Cat Compact equipment. As a trusted choice firm, the Richards Group has been committed to local communities for decades. We take the time to get to know our clients, their needs, and budget. We're independent, so we work for you, not an insurance company. We use our expertise to find our clients the best home, auto, and business coverage at the most competitive price. Our team provides consulting services for employee benefits, retirement plans, human resources, and leadership development. The Richards Group. Prepare for tomorrow by contacting us today. 15 minutes to go as the Big Green put the icing on the cake of a terrific statement victory on the road at Penn. Twins piled to the left side of the line. Justin Watson is split to the right. Dartmouth has just been so forceful in the trenches. Lisa unloads a pass over the middle, and a laser is caught by Ryan O'Malley between the hash markers into Dartmouth territory to the 49. And Ryan O'Malley takes himself out of the game now because he's been shaken up on that reception. The most points that Dartmouth had scored here at Franklin Field before today was back in 1961. A 30 to nothing shutout win. Ball spotted at midfield. Quakers with the ball between the hash marks line up with a pair of receivers on both sides of the line. Twins are stacked to the left. Danny Ferentz in the slot to the right. Lisa shotgun. Trey Solomon shifts from left to right in the backfield. Dartmouth now going with four down linemen. Lisa takes the snap, retreats the 40, throws to the left sideline, and Christian Stapleton 
Secures the catch as he races out of bounds at the 44-yard line, a six-yard pickup. Again, they're staying pretty basic with Andrew Lether, which uh, makes perfect sense because he has not played yet this season. He didn't play last year either. That's just a little five-yard turnout and an easy completion. A good throw, however. Second and four pin, Dartmouth 44, ball in the left hash. Lisa shotgun, Solomon to his left. Quinn stacked to the left and the slot to the right. Inside handoff goes to Trey Solomon, and Solomon follows the left side of the line block to the 41-yard line, a pickup of three. Christian Stapleton, that catch was his first of the season and seventh of his Quaker career. A really steady guy that's been a solid veteran contributor in the program. Third and one for the Quakers on third downs today. Penn is two for nine from the Dartmouth 41. Ball between the markers, trips right. Stapleton split left. Lisa in the shotgun set with Solomon to his right. Dartmouth lines up with four defensive backs. Hand off to Trey Solomon straight ahead. And he runs into a big green wall led by Eric Wickham. The initial push seems like it came from big down lineman Rocco DeLeo. His fifth tackle of the season. That was just a straight ahead. That was not a read action at all. And again, Trey Solomon went forward for a little while, and then he went backward. Fourth and two Quakers from the Dartmouth 42. They're one for two on fourth downs today. Lisa shotgun trips right. Stapleton split left. Shane Hour the tailback now to the left of Lisa. Option play. Lisa to the left side of the line. He peels around the edge and a first down. For Andrew Lisa in the Penn Quakers. Well done by Lisa. To keep this drive moving. He's done all right so far. Yes, sir. Ball on the left hash. Quakers from right to left. The Dartmouth 40. Quick shotgun snap to Lisa. Guns it to the left. Complete to Ryan O'Malley. O'Malley turns back towards the inside of the field and is tackled to the 34-yard line. He's wrapped up by Wickham. O'Malley and Justin Watson lined up on the same side that time. Justin Watson clears down the field. O'Malley turns out inside that for that easy completion. Penn hurrying up. Second and four from the Dartmouth 34. Lisa launches a pass into the right flat, and Ryan O'Malley had it square in his hands and then couldn't hang on to it. A drop incomplete. Uh, he just tried to run before he made the catch. He's out there in his lonesome on a little safety valve pattern. All he's got to do is make the catch. You know, you see that every so often. They take their eye off the ball, figuring what their next move is going to be, and the next move is the ball hits them in the helmet. That was the first incomplete for Lisa. He started seven for seven. Third and four, Penn, Dartmouth 34. Quinn stacked to the left side of the line, trips to the right. Shotgun empty look for the Quakers. Dartmouth with five defensive backs in this package. Lisa takes the snap. Shuffles back a bit over the middle. He's got Justin Watson at the 15. Watson at the 5. Justin Watson dragged down by Troy Donahue. Two yards side of the end zone. Well, I'll tell you, Andrew Lisa is showing us something here again on the post pattern to Justin Watson. Hit him on the dead run at about 18 yards down the field. I think Fancy again. Watson just ran to the seam and barely missed the end zone. He gets kind of wrapped from behind and dragged down. First and goal, Dartmouth two left hash. Twins left, trips to the right. Lisa fields a low snap that was on the ground, slings it to Watson. He was tied up amidst some pressure from behind by outside linebacker Flo Orimilade, who came up with the football, but there's a flag on the field. Well, it looked like the defense jumped in and uh, made contact for offsides. I think Andrew Lisa felt that he had a free play there, so he just threw the ball. Orimilade has been a terror all over yes, the place. Has. And the linebacker, he's an outside linebacker, was matched up with Watson. One of his fellow defensive teammates jumped early. So that'll set it up. First and goal now, just atop the one. Lisa, shotgun, Shane Hour to his left, slot to the right, empty on the left. Dartmouth with five defensive backs. Six men up across the line. Lisa takes a high snap, looks right, chucks it that way to the back corner of the end zone. Watson over the shoulder grab, and Justin Watson brings in his Ivy League best fourth touchdown of the season. That's a nice throw by Andrew Lisa. We had a little pick action, I think, out there on the right side. Cam Countryman was outside, Watson inside. They ran a little crossing pattern, and Justin headed to that far pylon deep in the end zone, and Andrew Lisa just laid it out there where he had to. Justin made the over-the-shoulder catch, so the 
Quakers, when they're down and down, you got to give them some credit for coming back and putting some more points on that board. Scoring with 11-18 to go in the game. Jimmy Campbell on for the point after, going to our left. There's the snap. The hold is down, and the kick is up, and it is through. Campbell missed the point after on Penn's other touchdown today, which was an Alec Torgerson one-yard run. But Torgerson is out of the game, and Andrew Lisa has sparked the Quakers a little bit. He is 10 for 11 for just over 80 yards, and he threw his first touchdown pass to Justin Watson. So we're talking about what to look for down the stretch of a game like this with a score now 41 to 13. Lisa has been decisive and he has seemed like granted given the score that's one thing that you have to consider but uh he has seemed like he's been comfortable out there yeah i'm trying to figure it out to tell you the truth because the the guy really has not been on the field and here as you said brian he gets in a situation where the game you know depending on how uh, rabid a pen fan you are is uh, still pretty much out of reach so you factor that in but He's been right on the money, and they've, they've helped him a little bit here with not giving him a lot of reads. He's looking for a primary receiver, and he's stepping back and throwing the ball. And so far, that formula's worked for him. The misting rain seems to have subsided, not entirely for the most part, but the wind has not backed down at all. Some cloud cover over the center city skyline has moved out. You can see a Liberty 1, Liberty 2, and the Comcast Center. But it's still not warm. This, this is November, December weather. This yeah. is when you want to be by the fire with your trusty dog <laughs> sipping a brandy or something. Uh, Danny McManus is back to return to the big green, kicking away from the right side of the field is on 35. Aaron Morgan, a short pooch kick. Racing up to get it, it is Ryder Stone. Whistles blow immediately when he made the catch at the 27. They're saying he made a fair catch signal. I'm not sure he did. I did not see it. It was a pooch kick, and he was running full tilt to, to get up there to make the catch in the air. It's pretty hard to be running full tilt and waving your hand for a fair catch, but apparently that's what the official saw. Okay, so they're going to take over at the 28-yard 20, line. Dalen Williams has left the game for the day after tying a career high with four touchdown passes. And Hedge, this is kind of new. We get our first opportunity to see Jack Hennigan, the son of a former great Penn Quaker. As Darman starts from its own 27-yard line, ball on the left hash going from left to right. Twins to the right, one receiver left. Handoff goes to Vito Penza, who saw some action, including a catch in the first half, and Penza has no gain. But, yeah, Jack... His dad, pretty darn good Penn tight end that you had the chance to watch. I do, I remember. And he actually played for, if I'm not mistaken, he played with Gary Vera, who was talking about this, a former Penn quarterback before the game. And Don Dobes, the current Dartmouth coordinator, was here at the time. When the elder Hennigan was an all-Ivy tight end. On second and 10, Hennigan nearly throws an interception to Jack Madden. But it falls out of the hands of Madden. Hennigan is five for 10 now on the season for 39 yards. And getting some new bodies in there on defense now. Threw for over 3,000 yards in high school. Third and 10, Big Green, own 28. Shotgun snap to Hannigan, a low snap that he has to field and bounces off of Austin Taps. Ball is loose and coming up with it for the Penn Quakers, a guy that always seems to be around the football. It is Nick Miller. And Miller, who had an interception earlier this season versus Lehigh in the first game, recovers the fumble and sets up Penn inside the 20. Hannigan sort of out-twisted and uh, motioned himself out of the football that time had he gone down he would have still had possession but as he spun around the last time the ball came loose as you said nick miller scooped it off the ground and he is uh, pretty agile out there on defense taking it down the sideline you know maybe with one or two defenders in his way he has a shot into the end zone tanner sexton or austin taps excuse me coming off the field he got shaken up, but he looks uh, like he's in pretty good shape coming off the field. So, Andrew Lisa goes to work again 
inside the Dartmouth 20. At the 18, Penn going right to left, slot to the left. Watson is in the slot. The outside receiver is Countryman. Two tight ends to the right side of the line. Andrew Lisa, the senior, 9 for 11, 80 yards and a touchdown pass. Lines up for the shotgun snap. Shane Hour to his right. He takes the snap, finds Shane Hour right sideline as Shane Hour makes a tough catch with Vernon Harris straight behind him. And that'll be a pick of about seven yards. Gutsy catch, uh, the circle pattern coming out of the backfield by Shane Hour. Well thrown ball by Lisa. He threw it so it was a flush catch in his chest, even though it's backwards for the defender. He took the shot but held on to the football. Second four for Penn from the Dartmouth 11. Ball on the right hash. Quakers go with the same formation. Lisa from the gun. Shane Hour to his right. And Justin Watson in the slot to the left with Countryman outside him. Lisa takes the snap. Hands off to Shane Hour. Shane Hour finding room on the right side of the line. And then accelerates the five-yard line after an extra bit of space and running room created itself. Yeah, they got that tight wing situation over there to the right side with O'Malley and, and Kelly. And that's where the play went. Off tackle that way. Shane Hour gets behind that blocking team. And then he just kind of bullied his way down inside the five-yard line. Third string tight end Ben Shalgren is into the game. First and goal pen, Dartmouth five. Ball favoring the right hash. Countryman split to the left, Watson to the right. Pistol offset now to the left with Shalgren standing just in front of Lisa and Shane Hour, the tailback behind Lisa. Lisa takes the snap, hands off Shane Hour straight ahead with a push. And Brian Shane Hour doing some more nice rushing, carries it down to the two, gaining three. They went away from the tight end side that time, but what they did is put Ben Shalgren in a blocking pattern across the formation to make the kick out. That's what created a little bit of a running lane for Shane Hour. He's just, uh, just couldn't get the nose into the end zone. Second and goal from the two. Lisa lines up in a pistol with Shane Hour behind him. Countryman split to the left, Watson to the right. The strong side is the left side of the line where the Quakers put both Ryan Kelly and Ryan O'Malley. Lisa from the pistol takes the snap again, gives it to Shane Hour, but Dartmouth was ready for it. From behind, another big play for the Big Green, and that time it was David Caldwell with a tackle for loss, a loss of a yard. He came in from the short side corner that time and caught it from behind. Nobody blocked him. 41-13 Dartmouth, 8.05 to go. Third and goal upcoming from the three for the Quakers, going right to left, ball between the hash marks, trips to the left. Receiver split to the right, that's Strauss. Lisa from the gun, finds Countryman in the flat, and Cam Countryman, right by the left pylon, scoots in for the touchdown. Good call, they had that trip look into what would uh, amount to the short side of the field, but they just popped the ball to Countryman. He's got the two other wide receivers in front of him. They did a decent job of tying up the defenders, and Countryman, as you said, snuck his way into the corner for a Penn touchdown. Second career touchdown for a senior Cam Countryman who's had himself a nice afternoon. Jimmy Gamble on for the point after. Slight breeze to his back, kicking towards our left. O'Leary with the high snap. Stapleton the hold and Gamble the kick. It is up and it is good. Back to return, Danny McManus. Dartmouth was aligning for an onside kick, but Morgan booms it away. Backs up McManus to the four-yard line, takes it up the right sideline, gets a block, but the Quakers were able to trip him up, leaping in there on the tackle for Penn. It was Trent Dennington. If you've been listening on the radio side, apologies for the drop in connection. Not sure where we lost you. Don't know if we missed the touchdown from Alec Torgerson to Cam Countryman. If we did, apologies. The score is now 41 to 20 with 7.46 to go in the game. Dalen Williams back out there for the big green. Tied a career high with four touchdown passes. Dartmouth left to right starting from its own 20. Handoff goes to, I beg your pardon, a fake to Kyle Bramble. And Dalen Williams goes up between the hash marks, but a flag is thrown in. Well, they only took Williams out for one set there. Maybe they're getting a little anxious with the score 41 to 20 point out that the first Dartmouth defense was in that last series when Penn scored the touchdown. So Andrew Lisa is not playing against the JVs here. He's playing against the varsity. And he's been very impressive so far in this outing. Ten-yard holding penalty against the Dartmouth Big Green. 
So Dalen Williams, possibility to potentially add to a career best tying day. Game clock moving midway through the fourth quarter. The wind is moving as well. Williams shotgun, twins to both sides line, first and 20 is zone 10. Williams throws to his right, Victor Williams is there to make the catch and he's wrapped up by Kennedy Jomer after gaining five. Dartmouth has nearly 400 total yards of offense. Penn has not eclipsed 200 yet today. Dalen Williams motions to members of Dartmouth with his hands, settle down, settle down. Well, they seem to be having a little problem getting the play in. Either that or winding off yeah, they're some of the game clock. Definitely doing that, Brian. Second and 15, Big Green, own 15, ball on the right hash. Quinns to both sides of the line. Tight towards the line of scrimmage. Bramble the tail back to the left. Williams takes the shotgun snap under pressure. Oh. Slips through a trio of Quakers. Now racing off to the left side of the field. Towards the sideline, Williams still on the move, and he slides just short of a first down. The improvisation of Dalen Williams on full display as he gets all the way up to the 28, a gain of 13. Boy, uh, how many times have we seen him get boxed in like that? And you say they got him. They had him about the the five-yard line, uh, Luke Nostrum just put a brutal rush on that time, took his lineman and knocked him backwards. There's no way that Williams escaped. Williams takes the 32 snap from the 28, handoff going inside to Ryder Stone, and he reaches the 31-yard line. Beg your pardon, Kyle Bramble with the carry, and that will allow Dartmouth to convert. The big green. It's interesting when you look at how their offense has operated over the course of this season. You know, they haven't had the best efficiency on third downs or even time of possession, but they have the big play strike capability, and we've seen that in various forms today. But there have been some more sustained drives by Dartmouth this afternoon. 5.34 to go, 41-20 Dartmouth, first and 10 big green, own 28. Shuttle pass inside to Bramble. Bramble escapes the first tackle, and then on second effort, he explodes out for a first down to the 41-yard line. Wow. I was just about to say, well, they ran that shuffle pass one, two time, one time too many, uh, but apparently they didn't because while they had Bramble boxed in pretty much at the line of scrimmage and put some pretty solid hits on him, they didn't wrap him, and he didn't stop. Ball in the Dartmouth, 41, left hash, big green from left to right. Cripps right, Dalen Williams from the gun. Bramble getting his first action of the season today to his right. Play clock at three seconds. Williams takes the shotgun snap, delay handoff to Bramble, around the left edge, a flag is thrown in as Bramble goes to the left sideline out of bounds after gaining four up to the 45. Don Pansiello a little bit slow getting up for the Quakers. Yeah, Kevin Ejoma is not in uh, such great shape either on the far sideline. That's two times in a row that he collided with Bramble. And he's kind of reaching the, the back of his leg. I don't know whether it's a cramp or uh, whether he might have got some hamstring. He's up kind of limping off. I think I, I'm hoping it's a cramp. Holding against the big green. As Dartmouth has accumulated six penalties on the afternoon. You know, Brian Bramble's not that big. He's 5'11", 205, and that's not necessarily big for a running back in these days. You know, they're, they're going 220, 225, but he's low to the ground, and he, he just seems so built that when they hit him, he doesn't go backwards. And if they don't wrap him or they don't get him low, they're not going to bring him down. And that's certainly been the scenario here this afternoon. Ejoma comes off the field and jogging off, so uh, apparently he's okay. After the holding penalty, it'll be first and 20 for the big green. Game clock moving at 4 minutes 45 seconds on the 31-yard line. Ball in the left hash. Dallin Williams, after sitting one series, continues to man things at quarterback with that ever-consistent demeanor of calmness and poise. If you look at number 82 on the screen, if you're watching at home, that is P. 
Houston Brown, who had herself a monster day with two terrific touchdown catches. As Dartmouth has shown, even with injuries, it has been more than able to survive. Play clock to three seconds. Williams takes the snap. Bramble gets the give, goes to the left side of the line, and there's nothing there. Maybe two yards at most to bring up second and 18. Well, that's another way to stop them, and which is get five bodies in on the hit at the same time. Good converging defense by the Quakers. Williams certainly the caliber of quarterback that elevates the level of play of those around him. And for better or worse, Hench, after today, the Quakers will not have to play against Dalen Williams <laughs> again. There's no threat to be a fifth-year player. You're, you're assuring us of that, correct? Well, hopefully for his sake, there is not. Yeah. And he can get through the rest of this season healthy and continue to do great things for the Big Green because it is a lot of fun to watch him play. Just unfortunately for Penn today, it's coming at the Quakers' expense. Second and 18, Dartmouth, 33-yard line. It's side of the field, a screen pass from Williams to Bramble. Bramble makes the catch by the left sideline. Third and 17, Dartmouth on 34. Ball left hash, Williams shotgun. Trips right, Williams split left. Bramble the tailback, Williams has plenty of time. Takes a shot downfield, he's looking for Williams. Got him at the 20. Williams is tripped up, a touchdown saving tackle made by the Quakers to prevent that play. Ton of credit to Kenny Thomas. Well, you know, if people say, well, he's just a, a fancy quarterback. He's got good speed. He throws the short stuff. He gets out of trouble. He can throw the long ball, too. I mean, we've seen that today. That was just a perfectly executed throw down the field. Wow. And here's 60 yard play after it's all said and done. Just exceptional, flawless spiral. And found his man, Williams. It'll be first and 10, big green, 10 11. Ball on the left hash. Williams shotgun, slot to the right. Williams to the left. Hand off Bramble, left side of the line. Kyle Bramble is mauled by a group of Quakers. Sam Phillippe in there, along with Nick Miller and Tyler Drake. Time winding down, 2.25 to go. Dallin Williams has never thrown for five touchdowns in a game. He already rushed for two this afternoon as well. You know, you would, I think, legitimately be able to call him almost a third down quarterback because when you get into third down, whether it's third and short, third and long, he's the guy who makes the play. It'll be second and 10, big green, 10 11. Shotgun snap to Williams, fakes the handoff, keeps himself running along the left hash, slides down to the Quaker seven. And if you're Dartmouth and Williams, just want to be careful here that Boy. with this game certainly decided. Nothing goes haywire as far as health, anything like that. You would think so. 90 seconds to go in what's been a tough afternoon for the Penn Quakers. Coming off the high of the win versus Villanova 10 days ago, and then today, a different type of experience. Play clock is at 10 seconds. It's third and six for the Big Green from the Penn 7. Williams shotgun, Bramble to his right. Brown split to the right, Williams to the left. Williams, hands off to Bramble, stretching it to the left side of the field. He gets towards the sideline and is thrown out of bounds to the four-yard line he went. And that'll bring up fourth down for the big green. Game clock stopping at 64 seconds. Ian Dobbins on the hit, uh, going all the way across the field from his safety position to drive Bramble out of bounds. That does stop the clock. 15 seconds left on the play clock. The 41 points for Dartmouth, matching its most ever against Penn. Fourth and three, Dartmouth, Penn four left hash. Williams shotgun, Bramble to his left. Bramble the carry to the right, spinning at the three, and the Quakers seem to have shut him off. Good congestion on the interior. Nolan Beagle and the initial push from Jack Madden as two of the linebackers deny Dartmouth on that fourth down try with 58 seconds to go. Well, you got to say that's a character stop right there. When, of course, whether he scores or doesn't score has no impact on the game. I'm sure the players aren't aware that they've already scored more points than they have at Dartmouth team against Penn. But, you know, when they were down and out, and it would have been real easy to say, you know, uh, let's get into the locker room. They chose not to do that and made a really valiant stop there. So that's 
something to commend them for. Quakers starting from their own three. Ball between the hashes. They're going right to left. Andrew Lisa from the shotgun look. A low throw to Justin Watson, who bent down to make the catch. It'll be ruled an incomplete. Let's get it off the turf. You know, you just talked about protecting Dale and Williams. I, I hope the Quakers are thinking along that line, too. It would look like uh, Justin Watson went down in a kind of funny position there. I, I, you don't want to see him get banged up at this point. Andrew Lisa has looked real good here in the second half. It'll be second and ten, Penn its own three. Twins both sides of the line, but stacked to the left. Shane Hour with a tailback, the right of Lisa. Lisa drops six yards back in the end zone, throws left, complete to Adam Strauss. Sidesteps one man and then is brought down at the 14-yard line. On the tackle for the Dartmouth Big Green, it was Ian Hanselman. Lisa takes the quick snap of his own 14 on first down, finds Strauss, but Strauss unable to hang on to the pass at the 20-yard line, incomplete. Wind has really picked up here in the second half. Yeah, I don't know if they can hear it through the mic, but you're, you're right. It's sounds like somebody's playing with some drums on top of it. It was a tough start for the Penn Quakers this afternoon. A turnover on their first offensive series. The veteran Dartmouth Big Green pounced and never looked back. Led by as much as 35 points. Second and 10, Lisa throws from his own 14. A deep pass down the right sideline, incomplete. Looking for Danny Ferentz up at the Penn 40-yard line. Just over the outreach uh, stretch of Danny Ferentz that time. A nicely thrown ball, as you said, just a little bit overthrown. Stop the clock. Quakers will get a couple couple more snaps here. 34 seconds to go. Third and 10, Penn, own 14. Twins piled in the stack formation to the left. The slot to the right. Lisa takes the snap. And off to Shane Hour, cutting to the right side of the field. Turns the corner up to the 35 against the right sideline. Past the 40 to the 43. Brian Shane Hour, a 29-yard run. Good call. Of course, Dartmouth's looking for the pass, protecting, you know, the long play. That time, Shane Hour on the read option just got into the seam there, took it to the sideline. Nice running effort. Chewed up a little bit of the clock, but that's sort of irrelevant at this point, too. Career long run for Shane Hour. The junior out of Princeton Junction. 41-20, Dartmouth leading. 26 seconds to go. First and 10, Penn on the 40. Shotgun snap. Lisa throws it down the middle of the field. Incomplete. Charlie Miller, the deep safety, the only man in the vicinity of the football at the big green 30-yard line. He's looking for a Ryan O'Malley in the seam, but the ball was well overthrown, and he was pretty well covered that time. The Quakers will suffer a loss in its first Ivy League opportunity of the season for Penn, unable to follow up that Villanova victory with another W. Second and 10, Penn on 40. Trips to the left of the formation, and Twins pile to the right an empty backfield for Lisa Lisa takes the snap shuffles back looks over the middle he finds Justin Watson after throwing complete down to the Dartmouth 42 yard line well the Quakers look like they're trying to get one more 16 seconds left Justin Watson was in the slot that time just ran into the middle of the field a nice throw again by Lisa from the 42 at Dartmouth with nine seconds left. Lisa to throw over the middle. He hits Ryan Kelly. Kelly a couple catches today. Down to the 36-yard line with three seconds left. Second and four, Penn. Dartmouth 42, likely the final play of the game with three seconds left. Ball on the left hash. Quakers right to left. Lisa shotgun. Shane Hour to his left. Watson split left and trips to the right. Lisa takes the snap. Heaves it down the right side of the field. He's looking for Stapleton who leaps up and can't make the catch. The Dartmouth Big Green swatted away in on the coverage. Jarius Brown breaks it up, and that brings to an end Penn's first Ivy League game of the season. A tough one this afternoon in the home opener. 41-20 the final score as the Quakers drop to 1-2, 0-1 in the Ivy League. And the Dartmouth Big Green win in Philadelphia for the first time since 1997, matching its highest scoring total ever in a game against the Quakers, 41-20, as the Big Green improved to 3-0 and 1-0 in the Ivy League. Well, there you have it, a big win for the Big Green and career-high days for Dalen Williams, 92% completion percentage, a school record, and for Victor Williams, his favorite target on the day. It's Dartmouth's first win at Penn since 1997, and you can tell after watching this offense operate, 
They're well on their way to their first Ivy League title since 1996. We'll see you next time on the Woods Watch Party. Week 5 comes your way one week from today.